Hey, good afternoon, Mark. How are you? I'm well. Great afternoon here. So uh, things things going well, despite a few few issues around currently being in lockdown here in the here in the UK. Yeah, let's talk about it. How is the UK in the lockdown? How are things going so far? Well, you know, we've um, we've entered a sort of second, well, third lockdown. Um, and that third lockdown is very, very important. Uh, the case rates of COVID here in the UK were going sky high. Um, so we've been on a lockdown that really impacts us as individuals, but also the leisure, hospitality and entertainment industries. What is promising, however, is that here in the UK, we're seeing vaccinations being rolled out and we're hitting around 400,000 people a day, which I'm personally very impressed with. Uh, if we can keep going at that rate, my belief would be that our movie theatres can start to reopen sooner than I expected. I had heard rumours that they were only going to open here in the UK in May. With these accelerated vaccinations, let's hope it can be in March. The rest of Europe, it's, it's a different picture. Um, countries like Spain taking it very seriously in terms of lockdowns very severe lockdowns, curfews, um, six in the evening till six in the morning. However, they've started vaccinating again. Countries like France were expecting big announcements about hospitality, restaurants, bars, cinemas reopening. But at this point, looks like that could be delayed. So pretty mixed picture here in Europe. However, the, the vaccination program gives movie theatres and the movie industry and companies like Harkness cause for some optimism. Let's talk about Harkness. Let the viewers know the background and how did you become on board? Yeah, so Harkness is now 91 years old and has been manufacturing cinema screens for all of those 91 years. The last 10 months, we've not made as many screens as normal. There's definitely not been customers able to take screens. And it's been a, it's been a tough, tough 10 months for, for the industry and, and for Harkness. I've been on board now for eight years uh, as chief executive. What we've seen in the last 10 months has really required first class teamwork, has required a real financial control of the business. We've performed, in my opinion, remarkably during that period of time. We've utilized government support in different countries. We've reduced our headcount in some, some parts of the world, but we're open for business. Our five manufacturing units are open for business and I'm very proud of all the team to be able to achieve that. I'm very thankful to many of my colleagues who have had to go on furlough, who, you know, I've been working reduced hours to get us through these difficult times. We are constantly trying to assist our movie theatre customers throughout the last 10 months. Our emphasis on helping customers has never changed. We're reaching out with webinars, with training courses. Very positive response from, from those customers. But 
you can't ignore the fact that so many of those customers, whether it's the largest in AMC or whether it's a small independent in Richmond, Virginia, you can't, you can't take away the fact that they have not had movies to show, that they've had to keep doors locked. Um, and that's been a tough, tough time for them. Um, and, you know, my heart goes out to them because there's so much uncertainty and so much unpredictability. Now, let's go back before the coronavirus. Let's say we go 90 days prior to coronavirus. How were things for Hartness and what was you guys' day-to-day -day operation? Well, I'd have to say we were having a bumper year up until coronavirus. We'd done some really interesting deals across the world. We'd had some significant new business wins in various parts of the world. Our, our sales for the quarter were as strong as they've been in the uh, in the previous four years. We were very we were very optimistic. We had an early indication about November 2019 that there was a problem on the horizon where we have a manufacturing unit in China in a town called Tianjin. And I had been in China in November 2019, interviewing for a new director of sales. And one of the guys that I interviewed came from Wuhan. At that point, I didn't know where Wuhan was. As I talked to him during the interview, he told me that his parents had been very ill with an unknown respiratory disease. Oh. So I, I came to the conclusion around mid-December that we really had to uh, put in place significant safeguards for our, our factory in China. And we did that and we've never had a case of COVID in our Chinese operation. But that experience I then rolled out to our other factories in India, France, the UK, and of course, the United States. In, as you say, the, the movie industry had had a fantastic box office in the 12 months before COVID, you know, from memory, the numbers are over 47 billion people through the, through the doors of cinema watching movies. So it was, it was, you know, it was a good, it was a good place to be prior to COVID. Now, once Corona had saved the very first beginning stages, how did you guys had to reposition? How did y'all pivot and manage the coronavirus with the disease so rapid? Interestingly, the first indications of change for Harkness were a number of our traditional customers asking us for outdoor screens particularly in Europe, the Middle East, and the United States, a number of customers suddenly wanted to do drive-ins. They wanted to put screens on the outside of buildings rather than in the movie theater. That, that was really helpful for us because it allowed us to obviously keep our factories running, but also allowed us to talk to our customers about the best technology to 
show movies outdoor. We then had an opportunity in India to support the Indian government with a series of products for their frontline health workers. Again, that allowed us to ramp up pivot in the, in the Indian facility. And that was really inspirational given what we were seeing at the start of the coronavirus pandemic. In the United States, we were able to work with schools. A number of schools approached us about screens, how they could use screens to subdivide spaces, to create a physical barrier so that the, the educationalists, the kids were, were, let's call it more able to move about their daily education without having to wear face masks. Now, what we discovered was that our screens are very good at mitigating the flow of airborne particles. That was a real positive. Our screens are also acoustically very good. So our screens did not prevent sound in a classroom environment. Some of the heavier duty plexiglass screens in the schools were causing problems with sound. Our screens did not do that. That was a key learning for us about how our screens could be used. And we've continued to supply those screens to care homes, to schools, to hospitals. And it's not a, it's not a, a business that we necessarily wanted to develop very quickly it was more of a service to the community and a service to our existing customers. Now, guess we're about 13, 14 months in to the coronavirus. What direction do you see heart is going? We've used, we've had a lot of lockdowns in Europe and a lot of that time has really allowed our research and development team to focus on some new technologies that we believe movie theaters can benefit from once we start to get back to some normality. We've had a good six to eight month program developing those new technologies. Those new technologies are designed to allow the, the movie theater to upgrade in a cost-effective way, allow the movie theater to compete against people watching movies on their TV at home. You know, one of the things that I've noticed is that people change their smartphones or their movie or their TVs every couple of years, whereas their local cinema, the screen in their local cinema is probably five years old. What we're able to do with some of these new technologies is give the movie theaters the opportunity to upgrade, to have the very best presentation and to do it in a far more cost-effective way than has been possible over the last 10 years. That will be important, I believe, 
and we know that movie theaters need to start showing new movies first start to generate some of their own profits and their own cash when they're ready we're confident that we have technology that can really help them get back to that normality now let's talk in terms of business uh where are things at versus china which uh china india versus the us how you make it out with the theaters reopening what's interesting is that we we expected cinemas to reopen in china around march 2020 and they actually only started to open june july as they've opened in china we've seen good attendance for locally produced movies and that attendance level in the movie theater has really given the whole industry confidence and that's that's great to see we're in a fortunate position that we're well respected in the in the chinese market we have a state-of-the-art manufacturing facility and we've we've got a very strong team on the ground so we've been able to work in partnership in in the chinese market as as cinemas have reopened india is is tougher um they certainly had cinemas completely locked down for six to nine months and they're really only reopening now and that includes 30 percent attendance limits or 50 percent attendance limits however again india's fortunate it's got bollywood so there is local new content that can help the cinemas we believe that india cinema whilst open is probably running at around 60 percent of its normal activity level we are hopeful that march april may we'll start to get that back to the 80 percent united states very tough there's a number of problems in terms of COVID, occupancy, safely opening, big players such as Regal have furloughed a huge number of their staff and Hollywood has not really been able to find a mechanism to deliver new content to the cinemas to give them let's call it a helping hand i believe they will i've got no doubt about that movie theaters are so important to the the movie ecosystem however in the short term we found the us a very a very tough market our factory still open but we have had to furlough people wow. our administrative offices um we furloughed people the majority of whom now work from home so we've seen a change in the way we've operated in the united states however we believe that when the united states bounces back it'll be one hell of a bounce back so we want to make sure that we're there to help our customers now let's talk about the article the times and the financial impact yeah no i was delighted that the uh the irish newspapers used an image that portrayed me as 007 James Bond, probably the most flattering image I've ever seen of myself. 
I fully intend to start using it as my LinkedIn profile. So the image was great. The, the narrative was pretty much factual. It talked about the steps that we've taken to protect the business during coronavirus. It talked about our ability to continue paying down our debt despite the, the coronavirus. And it talked to the fact that we really have been and continue to be a profitable business, which was factually correct. In the whole article, the one thing that was slightly misrepresented was our global sales. Actually, what the article referred to were our sales in Ireland itself, rather than our global sales. It was really that one element that made me smile. Um, but other than that, it was factually a very, very correct article. Um, and as I say, the image was fantastic. Now, what would you say um, you'd like to see the industry do, if anything, to help you guys out? Well, I think in the United States, we've seen the Trade Association of the Movie Theatres, NATO, secure funding, federal funding for independent cinemas. And that is great news. What's important is how that money is used and what's going to be influential for Harkness is if that money can be used to maintain the equipment within the, the theater. That's really important and that will, that will undoubtedly help us in the United States. Elsewhere in the world, what we've seen is a number of initiatives to support independent cinema. And there's been initiatives in France, there's been initiatives in the UK. They're very, they're very helpful. I guess it's the, the multiplexes that you and I would know as AMC, Regal, Cinemark, Cinopolis. They're the folk that are really having to fight tooth and nail through this, this period of pandemic. They have a huge influence on the vendors that supply the cinema industry, whether it's a screen, whether it's a projector, whether it's the sound system, whether it's the popcorn, they're the guys that influence. So the sooner we can get those guys back to good health, the better. And the whole cinema ecosystem will, will rise as a result of that. So my message has always been to all of our customers, large or small, if there's anything we can do to help, talk to us and we're happy to go that extra mile to, to find a way of helping. And where could anybody find out more information about you or your company? Well, we increasingly use Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, but the best place would be harknessscreens.com. Okay. That's where, yeah. that's where you'll find us. Um, and plenty of information, both technical and general. And if you're going out to a movie theater, just, just ask the folk that you talk to whether you can see a movie on our screen. You'll enjoy it, I assure you of that. And as we close out, any final thoughts? Oh, I, I can't wait to see uh, the latest James Bond movie being released in a cinema. Uh, historically, we've 
always supplied the screen that goes for the premiere of the James Bond movie. I'd love to be doing that again, sooner rather than later. <laughs> Seeing new movies on the big screen, that's really what we've got to get back to. And everybody can enjoy the big screen experience. Someone once said, you can't stream experiences. So let's hope the big screen experience is something that people want to get back to and will enjoy doing in a safe way. I'm sure that's possible and I'm looking forward to it. Hey, Mark, well, I'd like to thank you again for doing the interview. Great to, great to talk. I'll be in touch with you soon. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.